Thank you, Mr. President. This is a joint statement with the Association for World Education. On Human Rights Day, the 10th of December 2007, the representative of the OIC spoke glowingly of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, noting the contribution made to its creation and to the two international covenants by many Muslim countries. He went on to state that the 1990 Cairo Declaration on Human Rights in Islam is not, quote, not an alternative competing worldview on human rights. It complements the Universal Declaration as it addresses religious and cultural specificity of the Muslim countries, unquote. He also stated that the OIC is considering the creation of an Islamic Charter on Human Rights in accordance with the provisions of the Cairo Declaration. Excuse me, there is a point of order uh, raised by the distinguished delegate of Egypt. You have the floor, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. I just uh, seek your guidance under which item is the Islamic Charter of Human Rights is being discussed. I cannot see it in the agenda. Thank you. Thank you. As far as I understand, the statement made by this distinguished representative of the NGO is about the um, freedom of expression and other human rights. And uh, if my memory helps me, he is referring to a statement that was made earlier in this council. So this is what this is all about. Thank you. You have the floor, sir. But, Mr. President, it is difficult to see <clears throat> how the Cairo Declaration can be considered complementary to the 1948 Universal Declaration. It makes no reference to the Universal Declaration, whilst Articles 24 and 25 of the Cairo Declaration explicitly state that, quote, all Excuse me for interrupting again. There is a point of order asked for the distinguished representative of Egypt. Sir. Thank you, Mr. President. With all due respect, I think the discussion now, it's obvious from the statement being made, has moved to discussing the items of Cairo Declaration. We are not discussing the statement made by the OIC. We proceeded now to discuss and have consideration of the Cairo Declaration that was adopted in 1999. And I wonder under which item this is being made. I would understand if any representative of any civil society would like to comment on any statement made in this, declaration, in this council. But to go as far as to reconsider documents adopted in 1999, I don't think there is an item in agenda in this one. Thank you. Thank you for your intervention. I would. Uh... I think that we may have a debate on this. We constantly refer to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights that was adopted 60 years ago, and uh, there is uh, no comment about do we have or do we not have uh, the uh, appropriate moment of doing it. So at least from this point of view, I would think that the argument that uh, the distinguished delegate of Egypt has uh, mentioned is perhaps uh, in a need of being reconsidered. So if you allow us, sir, I will give the floor to the speaker to resume his statement. Thank you. You have the floor, sir. Under Sharia law, Muslim women and non-Muslims are not accorded equal treatment with Muslim men. The Sharia, therefore, fails to honour the right to equality guaranteed under the UDHR and the International Covenants, and denies the full enjoyment of their human rights to those living in states which follow Sharia law. <clears throat> I have to interrupt you, sir, again. We have two points of order from the distinguished representative of Pakistan and then from the distinguished representative of Egypt. You have the floor, distinguished representative of Pakistan. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. 
Mr. President, we are not discussing here the Islamic Sharia. It's a controversial subject to discuss it over here, and it falls within the uh, uh, within the ambit of freedom of expression. Uh, the balance between freedom of expression and freedom of religion. We are still discussing it in uh, informal sessions. How far freedom of expression be granted, as it, so as it not it does not abuse the right of the uh, uh, of uh, the individuals to exercise their religion. It is insulting for our faith to discuss Sharia here in this forum. So I would appreciate if the distinguished representative of uh, uh, of an NGO be asked to uh, limit his comments on uh, human rights declaration and human rights instru instruments and not on Sharia. Thank you very much. Thank you. The distinguished representative of Egypt, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. In light of your previous uh, intervention, sir, I would leave it to you, to your excellency, with all due respect, to decide if the statement is proceeding in the right direction or not. Sharia is not under discussion here, and I don't think it is a universal document that is, should be discussed in the Human Rights Council. Thank you. Thank you. I will take, I am fully aware about the informal debate, which is going, or the informal consultations, rather, that are going on in, on various draft resolutions, including this uh, very important one that was mentioned by the distinguished representative of Pakistan. Uh, having said that, I talk, take also note of the point made by the distinguished representative of Egypt concerning the Sharia law. And uh, in, uh, as far as the statement of the distinguished representative of the NGO would um, restrain from making judgments or evaluations on this particular corp of legislation, which indeed is not necessarily the point of our topic, I would invite him to continue and revert to references made in this room to other issues in various statements. You have the floor, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I was attempting to speak in the context of potential restrictions on freedom of expression which have been discussed in this room. But I will move forward and merely suggest, indeed urge, states to consider very carefully the negative implications for the universality of human rights and of the derogation from the international covenants which are implicit in the Cairo Declaration and in the plans of the OIC. Thank you, sir. Uh, 